Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity tutorial. In this one we're going to be continuing with the FPS series and we should be getting the UI working so that we can see when we pick up a weapon uh, which weapon we've actually got equipped at the corner of our screen and then how much ammo we've got for that weapon. Um, obviously it's up, for you uh, up to you to how to implement this because you might not need to display the weapon if you've got it in your hand because you know what it is, but um, we definitely need some way of knowing how much ammo we're on. So as you see, I don't know how much ammo I'm on with this gun. If I shoot it doesn't work. So I go pick up its ammo. And then obviously it starts working. Well, I only picked up like one apparently. Oh no, wait. That made the fire rate really low. Actually, for this gun, that'll be why. Um, and then for the pistol, I need ammo. There we go. And I can hold it down. But I obviously run out of ammo. And I still don't know how much I'm on. So we need to get that working. I'm out of ammo now, probably. Anyway, so the way we need to display this. Oh, a quick note. Um, one thing I did off, off the uh, video. I haven't added anything new, but I've gone through all my scripts and I've um, added namespaces. Now, many of you probably know what this is, or these are, but um, it's just a way of organizing your code. Just like how you put code in different folders, it's basically folders inside the code. So like, if I want to use my ammunition code inside some other code, then I use um, at the top, just like when you do using Unity Engine or using Unity Engine uh, .ui or whatever you do. Um, I don't know where I've used this for example, but um, probably somewhere I could go find it. Um, the point is, if if I use a certain type of, see so you see here, so this is dapper dot weapons, and I put that in the weapons folder. Helpers, I just kind of put something in helpers if they're kind of not related to anything else. Like, don't destroy and load isn't really a con like core mechanic of the game. It's just something that happens at the start on the manager system. But anyway, I, I, you don't need to bother with this. If you do want to, then obviously do it. But if you do start adding in namespaces, you've got to remember to also start adding using statements. So um, if I just quickly skip through this, I'll be able to find one. Um, I'm, I'm sure I had to do it <laughs> somewhere. Oh, here we go. Uh, so if you look here in the enemy health, I have to be using dapper combat because at some point in this, if I didn't have that, you'll see it doesn't know what I damageable is because I've put the interface inside my combat code basically. <coughs> it might seem a bit pointless but it's just for neatness because when you start typing in class names somewhere like and you get all these class and uh, other you know um, intelligence things like all the recommended what to type if you have tons of classes in a big game and you only really need the ones related to what you're you know using it's better to only get those rather than a big massive list of unrelated classes and code so it does help keep stuff organized um but anyway i want to start off by thanking my patrons thanks to michael norwegian viking paul robinson and Fulborn for their donations on patreon this month if anyone else is able to help out then the link is in the description below and i now have the membership youtube button instead of in, in case anyone is interested anyway so what we need to do we need to go to the main manager script and we currently have the don't destroy and load we can leave that and we have ammunition manager which currently stores a dictionary, which is a list with keys and values. So the keys, um, the key is the ammunition type, and the value is the integer of how much we have of that ammo. And that's you know the current system. I'm probably going to leave it as that, but I might think of a different way to do it at some point. But for now, that works. You know, if we want to find out how much light ammo we've got, we just go for light ammo, and then it'll give us the value next to it. If you look here, when we consume ammo of a certain type, we return true or false depending on whether we actually are able to shoot or not. And then, um, as you see here, what happens is if it's greater than zero, we reduce it and then return true, and it works pretty well. Um, if we pass in the type to the list, then it gives us the value. That's how uh, dictionaries work if you haven't used them before, but if you've been watching my videos, you should um, obviously have seen when I implemented this. So what we need to do is we need some way on the UI of knowing when we shoot the gun to update the count. So this is a private dictionary and we probably want a way to um, update the UI basically. So the UI could have a function that calls this to check how much ammo we're on. The problem with that is it's a bit silly for the UI to be you know calling this. We should tell the UI when it when we've consumed some ammo or we can use what's called a callback or a delegate that gets invoked whenever ammunition is consumed and then anything that cares about that can update so the way that we'll do this well what, one good thing to note is we can only ever consume ammo of the type of weapon we've got equipped which is quite handy for us because that means that if we've got like a light ammo consuming gun equipped and we shoot 
we're definitely consuming light ammo, meaning that whatever is getting consumed by this function is the same type as what we've got equipped. Because you can't shoot a gun that's a different type of what you got equipped. You know, it, it makes sense. So let's have um, let, let's have a ammunition UI. So it should be. Um, so in, in my own games, usually I don't have a manager object with loads of things under it. So first of all, this um, manager script could be called uh, ammunition manager, um, and then again, actually, I don't want this. Uh, don't destroy and load everywhere. Okay, th this this will be the manager's object, but then the UI will be separate. So let's let's delete that. This is just going to store the managers, and any UI will have on separate canvases. So if we go to uh, a canvas, make a canvas. Oh, I could have just dragged it out, but anyway, the canvas. We don't want a graphic ray caster because that's for clicking on the UI. But this is just visual, pure visual. Um, make sure your canvas scaler is scale of screen size and then put in your monitor's resolution and that's fine how it is now so we'll call this cam uh, this I'm um, canvas sorry ammunition uh, canvas um, and then what we want to do now with this ammunition canvas is go into 2d mode see there's a canvas and we will create a panel maybe there you go. All right, so we want this panel to be kind of in the bottom corner around like this much of the screen maybe. So let's do that and set it all to zero. So that's how much of the screen it's going to occupy. If we had a different um, resolution and it uses the same percentage of the screen, so that's good. And then what we want to do on here, so we'll call it um, ammunition panel um, or background. The reason why we have a canvas and a panel rather than just you know putting it on the canvas and stuff is because with the canvas you can have some nice components like the uh, the canvas group where you can change the alpha of everything underneath it in the canvas, which is probably one of the most useful things I found with it. Um, and also when it comes to up when it comes to updating the UI and you know redrawing everything to the UI, um, it's a lot more performant if you split up your canvases rather than having everything in one canvas, which is something I learned the hard way. <laughs> but anyway. We're going to now have a text thing. So that's this is going to be the um, actual count of ammo. So I don't know, maybe it'll say like um, 100 or something, right? Now this, I've not really thought exactly how I want to do the design for this. I also think that this is probably too big anyway. So let, let, let's just shrink this a bit. We really don't need that much room for it. We'll take the ammo number and go put it on the right, maybe. So let's drag these anchors up to the top right, top left. And then what portion of this do we want? Maybe around here, zero everything. And we'll set the text to be, um, wait, why is the text not? Oh, there we go. Okay, set the text to be centered. We could just leave it centered like that, it's fine. Um, design wise, I'm not really uh, too bothered, it's up to you. Maybe we'll leave it on a constant size so it doesn't look silly when it's uh, like going down, but I'll increase the size to be about 50. And we'll call this ammunition count. And then I guess I'll just duplicate that text and call it ammunition type. And put that here. Drag the anchors across, and then they click nicely into place. And we'll just say, um, like, light. So what we can do with that is we can then, when we equip a new gun, we can just update this to be the type of ammo which we can grab from the enum. So we can have like light, heavy, whatever, and then. Um, yeah, we want to auto size that and put a max size on it of like, well, what's the other ones? Sorry, 50. All right, go for a max of 50. I always like putting them in a zero because the point is if you're going to shrink the text so it fits in, you know, I mean, it's never going to be zero anyway. But now if we kept adding stuff, it wouldn't look stupid. Well, it would look bad, but you're never going to have an ammo type that's that long anyway. So there we go, got heavy, 100. And to be honest, you might even want this to be aligned to the left. 
and this heavy to be aligned to the right. Nah. See, the problem right now for some reason is that this uh, 100 seems a bit elevated. Oh, it is. That'll be why. Wait, what? No, it's not. I don't know. For some reason, it seems like that, even though it actually isn't. I'm going to leave that. I don't need to get too fussed about the display. But now we've got these elements on our canvas. So it's good on the ammunition canvas now to have ammunition UI. So we'll go make a new script. Call that ammunition UI. <coughs> and let's go and put that in the ammunition folder. Now, if you're following, wait, ooh, where is it gone? What folder has that gone into? It didn't go into any, apparently. Ammunition. There we go. So in the ammunition UI script, we now need to use the namespace, at least if you're following along doing that with me. So namespace dapper dot ammunition. The reason I use an underscore is because if you had, for example, a class called ammunition and you had dapper dot ammunition, it wouldn't let you because the namespace can't be the same as the class name. Uh, I found that out the hard way as well. So I've just got used to using underscores. I don't know if that's what people normally do, but it works just fine. So this is going to sit on the canvas for the ammunition UI, and this is going to handle storing the text elements and updating it all basically. So we're going to need a reference. Oops. We need a reference to the um, text. So we need to be using TM Pro because I'm using Text Mesh Pro. So we need a text mesh pro GUI, call it um, ammunition type text, and then we'll call this ammunition count text. So now we have reference to that. Let's write a function that uh, updates it. So we'll have a uh, private void. Wait, I'm outside the I'm outside the class. Okay, and we need to write a function called like update ammunition count. And um, what we could do here, which would be quite nice, is to have it taken the um, type and the. Well, actually, in reality, the type only changes when we swap weapon. So. Um, what we can do is we can yeah update ammunition count and we can have an integer new count and we just set the ammunition count text dot text equal to new count um, now that's an integer so obviously we'd have to uh, say dot two string like so and what we need to do now is we need to call this function but we don't really want to just call it all the time because we only want to call it when it gets shot and one thing is we could we could actually just call it in here. Um, and to be honest, I feel like, because it's so simple in this case, we're going to do that. We're not going to bother using delegates for this, but um, we will at some point for other things, most likely. Now, in our ammunition manager, we want to call this function um, whenever we consume ammo. So this is a good time, because this is when we actually do consume the ammo. So I'm going to go up to the um, awake, maybe. Wait, no, no, sorry, what am I doing? I need to store a reference to the UI. So we'll say, um, I guess at the top here, we want, whoops, a reference to the ammunition UI, which I will uh, do in the inspector. And we can say ammunition UI, this will have to be uh, public so that we can call it. Um, ammunition UI dot update ammunition count and into the new count so we can say ammunition counts ammunition type uh, with a lowercase a and that's the new ammo number now the thing is if we get to zero we actually do want it to just display zero um, but then when we change the weapon we want it just to kind of hide this I guess so let's have, um, we need a way for the weapon handler now to tell it when we um, change
changed weapon and what we've changed it to. So we can have a function called like public uh, void um, weapon change UI. I, I don't know what to actually call that. Um, weapon changed, like update weapon. Update ammunition type. Why not? And we'll have to take in, I'd say we should take in a gun, which can be null because it's a class, you can have a null. Uh, so we have to be using dapper.weapons. And what we can do is we can check if it's null, we'll disable the UI. And if it's not null, then um, we don't, I guess. That's probably the best way to do it. So we can um, get a reference on here to a canvas group, canvas group. So we'll just call it canvas group. Now this is a canvas group on the UI that the code's on. So we can actually just in the awake method say canvas group is equal to get component canvas group. And with this, when we take in a gun, we'll say, well, if the gun is null, then we want to say canvas group the alpha is equal to zero. Uh, which makes it obviously just hide the hide the uh, UI, and then we can say return because we don't want to do anything else. Uh, basically, we we don't want to do anything else. Then obviously, if the gun isn't null, if we have a gun, then we want to say ammunition uh, type text dot text is equal to uh, the gun that we've been passed in ammunition type dot to string because you can turn an enum value to a string. And to be honest, I think that's it, really. So when we tell it the new gun, we tell it that, yeah. Um, but also when we do update the gun, we want to call the ammunition count to update because different guns might have different, um, different guns will have different ammunition types. So we need to know the new count from here. So I guess one thing we could do is we could make a function in here, a public integer get get ammo. See, I've I've been consistent calling ammunition everywhere, and I've used ammo here, so I want to call ammunition uh, get ammunition count, and we pass in um, the ammunition type, and it simply returns ammunition counts ammunition type we could have done that in a different way but it's fine and now we can just say ammunition manager dot instance dot get ammunition count from gun dot ammunition type and we want to update the ammunition count. Now, I guess it looks a bit messy if we do this, even though it works just fine. Uh, we're not gonna really do anything else with the ammunition count here. We don't need to, so I guess we can just leave it like this, but if we needed to, we'd store it as a variable, but there's no, no need to store it as a local variable because we're just gonna tell this, basically, um, what we're doing, and that is done. That is done. So now let's go and actually get it working. Uh, we need to call it from here, that's the first thing. So, um, this function would be nicer if we stored the um, the ammunition UI, if we made it public so that um, other things could reference it through the ammunition manager. Um, so, if we go to the weapon handler, we can now say when we pick up a gun, so this destroys the old gun. And then we set that um, to the new gun. So at this point, once we've done it all, at the end of it, we can say ammunition manager. Well, we have to be uh, using the, you, uh, so if it's ammunition dot ammunition manager, I don't need to actually use the namespace. I'll just use. So it adds the using statement automatically. Ammunition manager dot instance dot UI. 
and then we've got a new gun so uh, I forget what I call the function to be honest uh, update ammunition type and the gun we pass in is our current gun which we've just stored um, now currently we can't drop weapons so technically whenever you um, pick up a weapon you then can't have no weapons but at some point I'll make it so we have a button like Q just to drop the weapon on the floor and that'll be then we'd need this to be like how it is because currently this current gun is only ever set to gun which is passed in so it can't be null I guess uh, it's fine we will have a drop button at some point in case you want that so that updates the UI there so this should all be working now if I just link it up so I'm missing a reference somewhere oh consume ammunition because I changed the spelling of that function and now when it compiles yep it's fine so if we go to the ammunition canvas we need to reference the type text and the count text and then on the managers it needs reference to an ammunition UI so there we go now let's put that under the managers actually because the managers doesn't get destroyed on load so it's actually good as long as we make sure to use other canvases under here for our different things then it'll all work fine so one good thing to do I guess at the start is to make sure the canvas thing actually has a canvas group otherwise we can't change the alpha and we'll start it at zero um, which reminds me quickly we set it to zero but we never set it to one so um, we you set the alpha of the canvas group to one if we get to this point um, and that should be good to go let's have a go let's have a go all right let's pick up this sniper there we go we got heavy zero we go and pick this up um, yep need to update the UI when we actually pick up ammo I've just currently got it when we consume it as you see there it's gone to 19 18 17 and let's pick up this other gun we've got light zero obviously I need to update when we pick up and now it's got 70 16 54 in. if I keep holding it down we run out then once we've run out if I try and shoot we're out so it works just go to the uh, let's just close all these so we don't need this open anymore we're basically done here just about to wrap up this video so uh, the ammunition pickup when we add ammunition actually yeah, we'll just do it in here it makes more sense so when we add ammunition as you see here we've added <laughs> so we need to also call the update ammunition count there we don't need to do it when we get so that makes sense and I guess it also makes sense to um, well, we don't need to call it on the start actually because the player's not going to spawn in with a gun so it's going to be on zero anyway <laughs> so pick up a weapon pick up ammo there you go so as you see just put it in full screen so it now works when we shoot and then we pick up our other gun we've got heavy ammo we've got 20 heavy boom boom pick up our other gun we've got light six and obviously I might even add uh, in the upcoming videos so we can hold two guns at once um, I obviously removed that when I was changing the gun system around but I think it'd be nice to have two guns and then have a Q button maybe or a whatever button you want to drop the weapon currently it just drops when you try and swap the weapons but I think it works pretty cool pretty well so I hope you enjoyed this video uh, obviously I'm going to keep going with the series we're making progress uh, keep leaving video suggestions down below about what you want to see um, what you want next in the series like main mechanics you want me to cover um, I'll try and get through them all over time but obviously I can only do one thing at a time uh, if you haven't already leave a like and subscribe it mean a lot join our discord server link in the description below help me on patreon if possible but apart from that thanks for watching and goodbye